This episode of The Swoopcast is brought to you by The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the smoked, the S&P bud, the Cary steak, and the old-fashioned. You can't go wrong with any of those great seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Again, that is themadcanadianbbq.com. While you're there, check out the three great packages that the Mad Canadian has, such as the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, and the Whole Hog, which consists of one of each of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian has developed in his Mad Lab. Be sure to be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10, at checkout for 10% off that entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based coffee roaster. Uh, they are world-class hand-roasted batch, roasted to order. I blew that one. Uh, <laughs> coffee roaster. Uh, they are based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near Toledo. They have a, a, such amazing, great coffees as, let's see, the Odin, the Thor, and the Loki. Your Nordic gods coming to roast with you uh the odin is a dark roast it is a very dark roast the thor is a medium medium dark roast and the loki is a wet processed light roast i'm not normally a light roast person but the last time i ordered a uh a batch of coffee from the iron bean coffee company i made sure to grab a loki because i liked it so much when i got it in a little sampler bag uh, i'll tell you more about the sampler bags in the next ad read but for right now, you can visit ironbeancoffee.com and find a coffee that's perfect for you. So once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? I'd say what's up, Discord, but uh, our, our live listen's empty right now. Are, are we counter programming something that I'm not aware of? <laughs> or is it actually just like a semi nice day in Ohio and no one wants to be inside? It's probably it. I mean, okay. as, yeah. as we're speaking, it's Northwestern in Nebraska. So I'm sure that nobody's watching that game. <laughs> no, no one's watching that game. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it is March. It is March. Yeah. You should be doing something with, uh, Mad Canadian and March Madness. Hmm. If you're if you're listening, Mad Canadian, wink, wink. Yeah. Just just make sure to do that in the next ad read, Kyle. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's uh let's start the show. We've got, We've barbecue, got barbecue back, back, here. back here. You're all, you're invited. all invited. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Slipcast are doing today, Kyle. Kyle. I'm doing all right. That was a little I, odd. That was a yes. little. It was a little too high. I, I've done that before, but that was a little too high. Crank, crank that, crank that reverb knob a little too high. Just a little bit. But I'm all right. Normally, I'm normally I'm a little more subtle with it. That was that was too much. I acknowledge <laughs> the the reverb knob that was too much. How is the weather today, Jared? As everybody no, wants to stop know. it. Stop it. Do not. Do not bring weather sure. talk into this. We have a full podcast. We have a full podcast and we aren't doing weather talk. You sure? Yes. All right. All right. Well, well tell us what we're going to talk about today, Jared. Well, we have. Uh, we have a, just a tiny bit of recruiting, just a little tiny, eensy, weensy bit of recruiting. Uh, then we're going to talk about spring football. Then we're going to talk some basketball. And then we have a bunch of Ask Sloopcast questions that run the gambit from basketball to football to um, pizza. So, and ice cream. And ice cream. So, yeah, we have a, a whole bunch of stuff uh, in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag. So uh, we have a full show. All right. So recruiting wise, Jared, yeah. uh, talk about what we have in our notes here. This tight end out of Missouri. Yeah, another another St. Louis kid, another pass catcher from St. Louis, although uh, he's bigger than most as he is a 
250 pound tight end, as opposed to some of the wide receivers that Ohio State's been pulling out of Missouri lately. Uh, this is, according to some, one of the absolute best tight ends in the country. According to the 24 7 sports proper ratings, by the way, he's a 2023 prospect, not a 2022 prospect. So we're super early in the recruiting cycle here. Uh, so the fact that Ohio State's offering him a scholarship, uh, they're they're not they're not throwing out a ton of 2023s yet. So the fact that they're offering him one tells you everything you need to know. Um, his name? Did we say his name yet? No. Tell us his name, Jared. Okay. <laughs> his name's Mac Markway. Uh, he is a Buckeye legacy of sorts. Uh, his uncle, uh, Steve Wisniewski. I'm normally pretty good at this sort of Polish names. Wisniewski. Uh, he is a former Ohio State tight end uh, from the late 90s. Uh, his, his career was not uh, what you would call overly memorable. So I, I forgive you if you don't remember him. But regardless, uh, he there there is a, a Buckeye legacy type aspect there. Uh, the good slash bad. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, I guess, from a competition standpoint, there, there, there's no secret here. Uh, Mac Markway knows how good he is. Uh, he listed his interest as being Ohio State, Alabama, Florida, Auburn, Missouri and Notre Dame. So the, the typical killers row of high level football. He's got a bright future ahead of him. We just don't know where yet. But, you know, Ohio State throwing out 2023 recruiting or excuse me, um, offers is still pretty rare at this point. So I think it's worth talking about. On yeah, top of that, like I said, he's uh, one of the top tight ends in the country and a, a Buckeye legacy of sorts. Yeah. And he's he already has a hit, a lot of uh, offers just finishing it, just finishing his second year of high school. So go, going in as a junior, he already has 25 offers already. You want, you want to name some of those? You want to name the, the good ones, <laughs> the, the, the notable ones. Sure. Uh, Alabama, mm -hmm. Auburn, Florida, Florida state, uh, even surprise Jared, uh, Iowa. <laughs> well, you know, you got to try. <laughs> yeah. Although he's uh, a tight, he's a tight end. I don't think that's yeah. a, Hmm? Yeah. I was done great things with tight ends. I don't think that's ridiculous. LSU, Miami, uh, the team up north, Sparty, Nebraska, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oregon, Stanford, Texas A&M, USC, Washington. Everyone of note. Penn something. State. Yeah. All, all of your major teams there. Oh, and Appy State as well. Oh, well, of course. I mean, you got to try. <laughs> if you're Appy State, you got to try. Yeah. All right, so that that's it for recruiting. Just a quick little update there. Um, by the way, that that uh, that list that I gave you that uh, consisted of Ohio State, Alabama, Florida, Auburn, uh, Missouri, and Notre Dame. Uh, that's courtesy of an interview with Mark Givler. You can read more from that er interview over at the Buckeye Scoop dot com. All right, Kyle. More football, spring football. Uh, Ohio State has announced some details in regards to spring football this year. Uh, the spring football camp is set for March 19th. So we're only about 11 days away. Uh, uh, sure. I'm just, I'm just going to, I didn't count. I'm just going to trust you on that. We're, we're 11 days away per Kyle. 11 days as this is being released. Assuming you're listening on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Which you should all yeah. listen on Mondays. Yes. For the record. You should all listen <laughs> on the exact day this comes out. Why would you Consistency. wait? Consistency. Yes. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, we'll have a very busy episode next week, Kyle. Uh, we'll, we will be in the middle of the Big Ten tournament. We will have spring camp uh, just on the horizon. Uh, we'll have a very busy, a very busy week next week. Mm -hmm. uh, the spring game is set for April 17th. Uh, presumably this will be on the Big Ten Network for everyone to enjoy. We obviously didn't get a spring game last year. It will be nice to have a spring game this year. Uh, 
Gene Smith uh, was non-committal about if anyone will be allowed in attendance or not. But I, I think he's, uh, I would say, pessimistic. I think he's saying that he's not expecting it at this point. Um, I'm not trying to get into COVID or vaccine talk, but we really might just be like a little, just a little too, cutting it a little too close as far as wide, like when when Kyle and I are able to get the vaccine, <laughs> Kyle and I as like low risk, like Kyle and I are last on the list for, for vaccines. I don't think Kyle and I can get vaccines by April. So I, I, I think that's basically the goal. Like when mm -hmm. everyone who wants a vaccine can get a vaccine, I think that's when you can start talking about <laughs> letting people in to watch the game. You know, you know, not not that you get 110 for a spring game, but even 85,000 people, we're not we're just not quite there yet. Yep. Yep. So I, I would I would just safely assume that. Tickets won't be sold. I, just, yeah. Let, let's just assume that right now. I but, think it's probably going to be a, a friends and family type affair. But you should still be able to see them on the Big Ten Network. That's that's the thing. That's the thing that we missed out last year. Yes. So so if we so if we can come in the middle there, we can watch some Buckeye football in the spring here, but we can't be in attendance. I'm all for. Yeah. Um, it's it's something. It's something. Of course, you're in North Carolina. It's not like you'd come up for a spring game anyway. Mm -hmm. Although you could. Yeah, but the the rumors about the Big Ten expanding, I, I, I would like some. I like some of that rumors Listen. to be true. <laughs> I've I've often, I have often included North Carolina on that list. I think North Car. I think the Tar Heels would be nothing more than to see a just planes and car full of scarlet wearing people. <laughs> coming to the triangle area where it is majority Carolina blue and just Duke blue. How far off is that NC state red? Is it anywhere near Ohio state Scarlet? I think that's more of a darker red. I you know, don't I look it up. Really we're, we're not wasting not, time. We're not, we're not wasting time on this. Know. We're not wasting. We're not wasting time on this. I'm just saying, I don't know. They just they just said it's Wolfpack Red, whatever. Well, that that's means. completely nondescript. <laughs> what's what's the hex, Kyle? You know what? Fine, we're wasting time on this. What's the hex? You want to know what the hex is? I do want to know what the hex is. Right I got it right here. It is CC mm -hmm. quadruple zero. Okay, that's actually pretty close to Ohio State's because mm -hmm. Ohio State is BB quadruple zero. And it says here if we go to RGB, I don't I don't know oh, RGBs. Okay, I, I don't know <laughs> RGBs. I know hexes. And I'm telling, like, the, it's it's pretty close. Then you just okay. go from BB to CC. That's pretty close. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. this this has been hex talk. <laughs> you do you want to? Is is it, is it Kyle? Is it sad that I know the Ohio State hex color off just the top of bit. my head? Just a tiny bit. What's the gray color? Uh, it's six. I'm not kidding, and, and I'm sorry if this offends anyone. Uh, this is not a joke. It is six, 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 six. Hmm. It's 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 six sixes. Interesting. Now it's not That's three sixes, but it is three sixes twice. So does that then counteract the devil? Because there's like you like devil on devil off. <laughs> uh, sure. Okay. Whatever floats your boat. All right. Let's get into some basketball news here. Oh, four game slide here for Ohio State as they yeah. as they lose to Illinois yeah. sixty eight to seventy three. They but, go they go from it they go from a double buy to now playing in the second round, which they would play the winner of Northwestern and Minnesota. Now, um, yeah, it, it's it's real tough because we were talking about the possibility. You know, we 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 needed that bye week. I think in the Big Ten tournament where everyone is so good, you needed that bye week. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, it's still, I I think you're still in good shape because presumably 
you're able to dispatch Minnesota or Northwestern. Neither of those teams are overly scary. Ohio State should be able to dispatch either one of those teams. And then, and this is the good news, you then get to play the fourth seed, which to me, if you're if you're talking about the three best teams in the Big Ten right now, there's a big dividing line between, and like Ohio State's not in that top tier anymore. You don't go on a four game slide and still put yourself in that top tier. Here's what I still think Ohio State's better than Purdue, though. So I still think Ohio State is a better team than Purdue, and I think Ohio State can defeat Purdue in that next in the third round. So well, you you beat. Let's just say Minnesota, maybe North, who cares? You beat that team. You move on. And I think you have a real good shot against Purdue. Mm -hmm. Well, give us about another two minutes here and we'll find out the winner here as, as we're recording this, it's 20 seconds left and Iowa is up by three. So it might be Iowa. So if Iowa wins, they stay as a three seed. And are they winning? They are up by three. Okay. Well, I, I like Ohio State's chances against Purdue a lot more than I like yes. Ohio State's chances against Iowa. Agreed, especially with, especially with what we saw Ohio State with, um, with Garza and how, how dominant he was down in the paint. Well, and as we transition to actually talking about the Illinois game, which we've not done yet, um, <laughs> Coburn killed him. Kofi Coburn killed him in in the paint this week as well. And, and um, what what kind of what position does he play? He plays center. Hmm, interesting. And the other losses Listen, that Ohio State had, we know what, this. What, what is the common trend there? We we know this. This is this isn't the secret. We, we've we, Ohio State doesn't have a true center. We every time we talk about basketball, we talk about Ohio State not having a true center. The Zed Key played. I would say I haven't actually looked at the minutes yet, but he played a pretty really only seven minutes, only seven minutes. I'm I'm surprised by that. I felt like he was in there a lot, or maybe it just felt like he was in there a lot because anytime he was in there, Coburn was <laughs> making it obvious Zed Key was in there. And like, I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to crap on Zed Key. I'm really, really not. I, I don't think it was. I don't think it's a fair expectation that he would have a good game against Coburn. That's not a fair mm -hmm. expectation for where Zed Key is in his development right now. So don't don't take that as me taking shots at Zed Key because it's not because he tried. He was put in there, given an opportunity to try to affect the game against Coburn, and it, it, he he didn't he didn't um, he didn't get it done. And again, I don't think th that was. I don't think it was I don't think it's fair to expect that he would have looked great against Coburn. Um, he struggled against Coburn. And honestly, that's the expected outcome. So, like I said, please don't take that as me being negative towards Zed Key. Uh, Liddell, I thought, looked good at times against Coburn. He looked great offensively. That's that's a pretty much a given at this point. But considering the size he's giving up. Which we should just change the name of the podcast to considering the size. If that's that's all we ever talk about. Ohio State, considering the size they give up in the paint. Really not doing terrible, but they're still not doing well. And mm -hmm. but they're doing as good as I, I just I guess I say this because I don't know what you fix. Because even though they're getting killed underneath, they still had more offensive rebounds than Illinois. They only had two less total rebounds than Illinois. But when you have someone like Coburn, like um you literally just said his name from Iowa. I don't why am I blanking? Um Garza. When you have someone like Garza, I just Ohio State doesn't have an ability really to to, to stop that offense. And again, if Ohio State wants to. Ohio State has to outscore teams, period. 
mm-hmm. because and, and they just they they just need more consistency from their guards. I mean, I mean, we'll mention again. I hate I hate to have to keep pounding on the same person. Seems like this is week three now, like the third week in a row. But but Justin, um, it, Justin Arns. Aaron Arns, yeah, thank you. Um, he had, he had six points for the game, which I think they technically list him as a forward. Whatever. Either way, e- either way, like he, he's a jump and shoot type of person and he's just not doing it from what we've so- seen earlier this year and even into December. Now, the good news is if you're if you're looking for progression from Justin Arns, he had twice as many three point makes in this game than he did in the past three games combined. Which is to say he had two. Um. But yeah, Ohio State, again, I feel I feel like we're a broken record talking about this Ohio State team, which it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And Ohio State just needs to execute better when it comes to just getting guys open, because I think defensively they're they're okay. I think defensively they're okay. They're just getting outmatched by bigger teams, essentially. They just it's it's a real tough conference to be in without a center. I mean, uh, it is crazy just how stacked, how stacked this conference is. It, it well, really not only is. how stacked it is, but how stacked it is at center specifically. Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, the, the Wait, you got four, you got four Big Ten teams in the top seven right now. Yeah, uh, and and again, not that. Purdue's always big. I mean, just Purdue's always big. Michigan has a big bruising center. Illinois, big bruising center. Iowa. Um, is, is Garza technically a forward? Or is he? It doesn't matter. He by he's still just this big bruising paint presence. But <laughs> yeah. It, it's a real tough conference to be in without. Zed key three years from now, two years from now, because that that's Ohio state needs Zed key. And from they need future Zed key right now is what is what they need. And unfortunately they have today's Zed key. Uh, you know, they, you know, I, I I'd settle, I'd settle for, you know, uh, of uh, anyway, not, not important. Bottom line is they just don't have the size in the paint to bang with some of these teams. And the only way they're going to beat some of these teams is simply by outscoring them. Mm -hmm. And 31% behind the arc won't do that. No, you got, you got to be in the upper 30%. You got to be in the upper 30%. Yeah. Because again, you can't bang in the paint, which also limits what you can do offensively. I mean, we keep talking about it defensively. It also limits what you can do offensively. Yep. And if you're not making your outside shots, then there's, you know, there's no room for Liddell to to do anything down low. And that's the guy who you want to be doing stuff down low, although I think he hit two three pointers in this game. Um, That being said. So we've been we've been negative, we've been negative, negative, negative. Illinois is the number four team in the country. And Ohio State looked like with about two minutes left that they had a really good chance to win the game. So like all's not lost. I don't I feel like we're being very doom and gloomy about this basketball team right now. And you know, four games slide. Like it's it's not undeserved to be talking about this team from a doom and gloom standpoint. But you but you look at the teams that they played, Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, and Sparty. Like those are other than Sparty having a down year, Sparty still Sparty's, Sparty and Sparty's, Sparty's been playing well lately. Mm-hmm. I, I get and, that they had a real it, tough it, it, three it's quarters. Three te- it's three teams that are that are in the top ten, top seven, essentially. Yeah. Right now. That's that's a tough way to end end the season there. And again, but they, but, but they they've played better in this Illinois game. They've played better than they did against Iowa. Like in the Iowa game, Michigan I just State. felt like they were never in it. I agreed. 
This this felt more like the Michigan game. Mm-hmm. Now, now that that brings up the next question is, how can Ohio State with these top teams here? How can they finish? Because that's that's the thing that they're struggling with. You just said like with two three minutes left in the game, they were right there in mm-hmm. it. It was a tie game. It was a one point game. Being able to finish the game is what's been hurting Ohio State in three of their four losses. They lost to they lost to Michigan by five. They lost to Sparty by four. They lost by to Illinois by five. Yeah, got to find a way to close the game here. Yeah, I think watching the game, and I think one of the one of the announcers. I don't know. I don't know if it was Vital or the other guy. I forget. But one of them just said, Ohio State just picked the exact wrong time to go cold. It just in that last two minutes, they stopped making shots. Yep. And I don't know if that's just bad luck in the way that, you know, not all of the shots go in. Some of them don't. And, you know, it's it's skill based. So I don't want to I don't want to use the word luck to to prominently here, but like some shots go in and some shots don't. Was it bad shot selection towards the end? I really don't think it was. I think the the ball just didn't go down. Um, is that psychological? Because Ohio State's given up some games late this year. They've not closed well this year. So is this. Or, or is Ohio State now in their own head about closing games? Is this a psychological barrier? I don't know. Uh, but the. If you just look at this game on an island and you don't necessarily consider the rest of the season, it's pretty easy just to say they got cold at the wrong time. And I don't think you'd be wrong to say that, but I also don't think, well, also the game doesn't happen on an island. There is a larger trend of it happening. And part of me just thinks they get, it's just become a thing. And it's a, it's a thing that as a player you're absolutely aware of that you're giving up these games at the end. And is that somewhere in the subconscious of, of Washington who missed a couple late shots and, and one of the best players on the team, I'm not crapping on Washington. Just the fact of the matter is he missed a couple late shots. Is that, is that now in his head? And is that somewhere deep in his subconscious? Is he adjusting his shot? Is he doing something is there some sort of psychological baggage some sort of psychological blockage that is causing that to happen and maybe or you know maybe not they've also they have also closed some games it's not like they've not closed any of their games they've also you know this is still i think potentially a top 10 team in the country um maybe not after we see the rankings come out, but also maybe it's still an 18 and eight team through the regular season. They'll they'll get 20 wins this year. They'll pick up at least one in the Big Ten tournament. They'll pick up at least one in the tournament tournament. So this is a 20 win team. It's not a bad team. It's just a really good team in a conference filled with really great teams. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think what we were looking for is for a Holtman team to take the next step. And I think this Holtman team has taken that next step. But I mean, at the beginning of the season, never really thought that they would be a, like as good of a team as they are right now. Is it like a top seven, 10 team? But then as we talked about like three, four weeks ago, we were talking about like, is this a final four team? Is this an elite yeah. eight team as yeah. well? Now, I mean, the past two weeks have definitely told a different tale, but it's still a quality team. They still like a third, like a number three seed right now type of team. Possibly even two, depending on how well they do in the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so. So the game, the game just finaled. Uh, Iowa beat Wisconsin 77 to 73. So Ohio State, if they beat Northwestern or Minnesota, they would play Purdue. Okay. So 
there you go. I, I think I think Ohio State can win those two games. Now, I'm not saying they will beat Purdue. Purdue is obviously a very good basketball team. They're mm-hmm. higher seeded than than Ohio State right now, but they can yeah. beat Purdue. And I'd yeah. much rather play Purdue versus Iowa or yeah. Illinois or Michigan. Yeah. So, so you went, you went, let's say you win two games in the big 10 tournament that, that puts you right up there on the cusp of a, of a two seed. That puts you right there on the cusp. Yeah. And I think, you know, win two games, earn a two seed and hopefully it's a high two because the very, very top of the <laughs> basketball world is very, very good right now. So yes, it's uh but the good news is that Ohio State is is battle tested. I don't know. So so Ohio State will be playing Thursday. Uh so we'll find out who Ohio State plays on Wednesday when it's Northwestern and Minnesota play. But Ohio State will be playing Thursday, the winner of that game, and then they would also if they win that game, then they play that Friday. So depending on how a state does, we may we may hold off on <laughs> we may hold off on the recording till later if if all goes well. But yes. we'll see, we'll, we'll see. see. But with that being said, I think it is time, Jared, to um, to hear from our good friend, our good sponsors, who are sponsoring today's episode. Am I going first? Or are you going first? Yeah, let's let's hear from from our good friends up in Perrysburg, Ohio, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I thought for a second you were going to roll with it. Uh, the, <laughs> the Iron Bean Coffee Company, I told you to talk about some of their other coffees that they have. In fact, I think I told you about the new sampler. Uh, they have a, a new sampler. They used to have a six pack, but we we've I think we've gone a, maybe a step further than that. We now have the whole shebang. That's it. You get a two and a half ounce bag of everything that they roast. It's the ultimate gift for anyone who is, you know, or really maybe even a gift for yourself. If you're just maybe looking at the Iron Bean Coffee Company and you want to figure out which which one you want, which one's going to be your favorite, then I think this is a great place to go. It is, like I said, it's... uh, Two and a half ounce packets. It is a uh, he says here that a two and a half ounce packet brews uh, 64 ounces of coffee. You can get that whole bean or ground. Uh, All of the beans are single sourced integrity based beans. Uh, They include the fear, no evil, the fierce, the integrity, the drink, this drink from the skull of your enemy, the Odin, the dark Rocco, the Thor. The regular Rocco, the ride or die, the cast iron, the rage against the dying of the light and the Loki. So that's all of the unflavored coffees uh, available to you in the whole shebang. That'll cost you 25 bucks. And I think that's a I think that's a great deal personally. So once again, that's 12 coffees in two and a half ounce. It keeps you real fresh, too. Maybe if you're an infrequent coffee drinker. That's the, that's keeping all your stuff real fresh. And by the way, it's 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 roast to order. Uh, so, you know, it's fresh. And you're getting the whole thing in individually wrapped bags, making sure those beans stay fresh as long as possible. And all that costs you about twenty five bucks, which I think is a great deal. So you can find that and a whole lot more over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company dot com. It's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Speaking of of whole packages, mentioned at the top of the show here, the whole hog that the Mad Canadian has, which is one of each of the 14 seasonings. That's right, 14 seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at the madcanadianbbq.com. He says here, this is the mother of all box sets. Great present for that pit master in your life. Get one bottle of each of the seasonings in this set. Never be lost for a flavor again with this complete collection of the Magony Barbecue Spices. You save $7 over ordering individually. And you can save $8 more by using that promo code SLOOPCAST10 for 10% off your entire order. What are those seasonings? That is the Brits Blend, the Coffee and Q, Sonoran Heat, 
the Cajun Smoked Savory Two Border, the SMP Bud, Carry Steak, Discord, the Ope, Four Horsemen, the Old Fashioned, and the Mad Hatter. Check those out over at themedcanadianbbq.com where he has your butt covered. All right, Kyle, it's time to get into some Ask Sloopcast questions. Yes, sir. We got a wide range, as, as you mentioned at the top of the show here, from basketball to football to ice cream to pizza. Pizza. pizza in here. There's some pizza in there. All right. Let's let's start. Let's start from the top here from our good friend Nomad. Big 12, Big 10, or ACC. Toughest top to bottom conference for basketball. Now for I'll, I'll let you start that one off, Jared. Well, Big Ten one. Is he asking us to order? I'll order them. I don't care if he's asking us to order them. Uh, Big Ten one. I'd probably put the Big 12. If we're talking specifically about this year. This year. If we're talking specifically about this year, I'd put the Big 12 two. Do you agree? Yeah. Do you disagree? So ACC is definitely, definitely down. I mean... Yeah, Duke is Duke is five hundred right now. <laughs> Duke is five hundred. That That's, hasn't happened. Had that hasn't happened in since before Coach K, I, I believe. I I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what it feels like. They, they haven't had this bad of a season in a long time. North Carolina is finding their finding a good run right now, but essentially you only have three teams from the ACC that are in the top twenty five right now the big 12 yeah big 12 has how many do they have three six they have 10 teams in the big 12 right now and seven of those seven of those 10 are ranked so you you could possibly say maybe it's the big 12 who's who's number one possibly the the big 10 has six big 10 has six teams right now but you look at Currently, right now, as we're recording this, Michigan 2, Illinois 4, Iowa 5, Ohio State 7, yeah. and then Purdue and Wisconsin rounding, rounding up the uh, the top 25 there. You could definitely possibly say that, but from top to bottom, I don't know. I, I, I might stick with the Big Ten there because you look at some of the bad teams in Big 12 where you have Iowa State, who's only won two games all year versus versus uh big tens uh worst team who's won which is nebraska who's won seven games potentially eight depending on depending on how their last game goes here uh but yeah i i would say big 10 and then a slight notch above big 12 and then acc if we're comparing those three yeah i i agree mm-hmm. sun card 19 asks us you know how it is rumored that players get paid under the table in college football. Have you ever heard a time where a coach is paid by a player to play? Where a coach is paid by a player to play? So presumably like someone really, really, really wants a scholarship. So they bribe a coach to offer them one. Is that what he is suggesting? Yeah. So that's how I'm taking that. And uh, no, I've that. never heard of that. Never heard of that. Uh, well, the thing is, is that like an individual, they're, they're, they got too much salary on the line just to be taking kids who don't deserve to go there. So, so then maybe he's kind of thinking of maybe more of like Reggie Bush. Well, no, type. cause that's the payer being played. The yeah. player being paid. Yeah. I, I don't even know. Yeah, I wouldn't even know how to entertain this. So I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, to answer your question, no. no. All right. Um, Nomad, what will you each be making on April 17th for the spring game? So we're talking about some mm. food here, Jared. But I think we kind of answered this a couple of weeks ago. Well, I think he's specifically asking about the spring game. What will you each be making on April 17th? You know, I just I just had some ham and ham and cheese sliders for mm-hmm. lunch. Mm-hmm. So maybe some sliders, maybe some not, sliders. Not big on sliders. That's not a, that's not that's not a thing for me. 
That's just okay. a personal preference. That's just that's, that's it. That's just me. It's a personal preference. Um, mm-hmm. something on the grill. I don't know yet. It's something on the grill. Maybe some ribs. Yes. It's getting warmer out. It's nicer. It's it's grill. It's getting grill season. Yeah. So, uh, something on the grill. Something on the grill. All right. Uh, no bad. Who wins the spring game, Scarlet or Gray? Mm, gray. I got Gray this year, man. I got Gray. Let's go. All right. Gray. Going with the, going with the sixes, right? Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Just just for the sake of argument, I'll go with Scarlet. We're going to go with Team Scarlet. We don't even know who's on the such teams a, yet. A, such as such as the Scarlet Witch. Mm, mm, no spoilers. Mm, mm, no spoilers. Shh. Nope. Uh, Kabuto asks, of the major players that choose to return this year, predict the one most likely to have a Sean Wade-style loss of draft stock, such as Garrett Munford, Olave, and Rucker. It would have to be Olave um, simply because I think he has the most to lose. Yes. I, I uh, You could probably say the same thing about Thayer Munford, um, but they they have the furthest to fall. And I, I, I agree. I think Olave, just because of the unknown, it, it, it's going to be a good quarterback, whoever it's going to be, but it's still the unknown for this year of uh, the quarterback. And Even how if well. the quarterback's great, he's still not going to be as good as Justin Fields was last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you yeah. know, may, maybe next season they're as good as Justin Fields last year, but this season they won't be. It's not a fair expectation to put on them. Ohio State's mm-hmm. taking a step back at quarterback this year, and that, that that's okay. You're not going to have yeah. Justin Fields in his third year of college football every single year. Mm-hmm. And maybe that affects Alave in a negative way that hurts his draft stock. Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh, players um, being affected in a negative way, he also asks, Kabuto asks, does Ohio State put out social media posts on purpose involving their lesser, not yet ready guys to help the player's ego and keep them from transferring? Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure about the premise of the, I mean, I think they just probably do that for all the scholarship athletes. Do they not? Cause yeah, if, I think so. I think it's probably just generally a way to give equal attention more than anything else. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just obvious when you see a, a social media post with, you know, Chris Olave and or Haskell Garrett or, yeah. you know, UB1, WR1, RB1. Right. You, you just don't second think it. But they maybe they're also trying to give some equal attention to the other guys. So maybe at that point, maybe you ever like, oh, why are they giving attention to the third string guard? Well, just just, yep. just to spread it around. Yep. Uh, they don't no charge you per tweet. You might as well. Yeah. Nomad asks, does Ohio State have a Heisman finalist this year? And who might that be? I'm going to answer Chris Olave again. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's the easiest that's answer. Fun. Yeah, I, I mean, you would love to say whoever QB one is and sure they, they'll, they'll be up there as, as a preseason finalist <laughs> or a preseason. Well, again, hopefully. he's not asking who wins. He's saying oh. a finalist. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I would, yeah, I would Miller and or, now. well, not, not, and Miller or Stroud, I think are, are, you know, you're going to be Ryan Day's new freshman quarterback. You're going to be QB one at Ohio State under Ryan Day. That that possibility exists that you're going to be a Heisman finalist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Kabuto asks, will Ohio State have a different opening day QB one in 2021, 22 and 23? I would say no. I'd say whoever starts this year starts next year as well. I agree. 100%. Uh, Nomad asks, who is the starting running back come September 21st? Or I'm going to guess come. So what? Come September 2nd, 2021. Oh, yeah. To September 21. Um, I, Master Teague at that point. 
Yeah. I, I definitely think it's going to be Master Teague. Master Teague is going to get that nod. Now, if we say November 2nd, that might be different. Right. I agree. Mm-hmm. Favorite style of beer on a hot summer day? Um, a citrusy IPA, like a, Ooh. like a, like a, like a hazy. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like a hazy IPA. Yeah, like a, but 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 with like a high citrus one, not not a resiny one. I'm mm-hmm. getting real beer nerdy right now. I, I, sorry, anyone who's not following along. Um, I would say something like. Uh, Wolfridge has one called a Surf's Up. That's like a high citrus IPA. That's great in the summer. Um, Masthead out of Cleveland has the Tire Swing. That's a good summer beer. What about a summer shandy? Ah, uh, I'm over the shandies. That's just that's just me personally. I'm not. I'm not saying you know. It's just me personally. I think I think a summer shandy would be good like on a really hot day. Yeah, it is. To, to to me like a like an IPA on a really hot day, it just doesn't really do it now like a maybe a lighter hazy ipa yeah, might, yeah. might do it but um jackie o's has a uh lost marbles that's a that's a great that's a great summer ipa like some like a like a juicier higher citrusy ipa like even an elvis juice i think is is a good summer beer mm-hmm well, stick, sticking to beers here, I'm going to skip down a little bit here, Jared. Austin Formation, what is your favorite type of beer for a nightcap in each of the four seasons um, in your respective states? <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like a quote unquote night, nightcap person. Um, but if we're, if I just take that part of it out, like what are my favorite seasonals? Maybe. I don't know. Like. I, I uh, listen, I, I do intermittent fasting and I'm not allowed to have calories past nine. OK, so there's no nightcaps happening. So no, no calories past nine, Austin. Uh, but as far as. Like, OK, favorite. Summer beer, I think we, I might have to go back to the Lost Marbles. That That's a really good, great one from Jackie O's um, favorite. Fall beer might be the Wolf's Ridge Oktoberfest. Favorite winter beer might be. Is winter when the Nosferatu comes out from Great Lakes? I think that's when that happens. Um, is that my favorite winter beer, though? I don't know. I have to think about the winter beer one. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, and the favorite spring beer, uh, I'm going to go back to Great Lakes there. That's that's when the Conway's comes out. That's a great spring beer uh, when the Conway's comes out. Um, yeah, I, I I really wish I had uh, read this one ahead of time and put more thought into it. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> I'm still like here in North Carolina. I'm still kind of, I don't really have a favorite like winter one, but I really did like, uh, I tried last year. There's a Foothills, Foothills Oktoberfest. Um, Mm -hmm. it's based out of Winston Salem. It was a really good Oktoberfest that I really enjoyed in the fall. Didn't really find any, like, I mean, there were some good ones, but I wouldn't say that like my go-to one or my favorite winter one. I just haven't really found that yet here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's some Christmas sales that I like, um, uh, winter beers typically are not my favorite beers. I, I like I like the fall beers and I like the summer beers. Those are my two favorite. Those are my two favorite beers. Mm-hmm, yeah, I probably honestly probably say, I don't know. I've never really heard like a spring beer either. Um, yeah, I mean, there are spring beers. Uh, it's just okay. it's maybe not as much of a quote unquote thing as. Yeah summer beers or fall like because summer beers that's when they get kind of light and hazy and citrusy and a little bit easier to drink when it's warm out and the winter beers are typically like stouts and porters and like like thick beers and fall beers are characterized by like pumpkins and oktoberfest and stuff like that but yeah uh spring beers don't necessarily have much of an identity yeah well speaking of seasons here nomad 
strictly weather wise, mm-hmm. spring or fall? Fall. 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 My favorite, my favorite time of the year, fall. Yeah. And but I mean, if you don't live in Ohio, that, that's that's Ohio at peak. And the leaves start turning I, colors and I, I do I do miss that, Jared. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fall in Ohio. Fall in Ohio is great. It is. Love it. Uh Nomad also asks. We're going into food here now. He asks Donato's or La Rosa's. I don't know if I've ever been to a La Rosa's. I know that's a mm. Cincinnati thing, and I know that they have a little uh, maybe a couple. Look, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think they have some sort of presence in Columbus. I think there's one up by the hospital in Dublin. If I'm, but I've never been to it. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know La Rosa's. I like I like Donato's just fine. I think it's. I, I guess I'd go with Donato's. I never had La Rosa's, so you're gonna you're gonna have to tell tell us no bad how how La Rosa's is because I I can't really Listen, answer that question. I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone, but I'm going to. So you're not sorry? No, no, I guess <laughs> not. I just I kind of just I kind of just don't trust Cincinnati when it comes to food. When 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 skyline is your thing, <laughs> how am I supposed to trust you? Not to mention. Y'all are like in last place in the beer game. I, I'm calling you out, Cincinnati. I'm not saying all of your beer is bad by any means, because you have some good breweries down there. But like Columbus and Cleveland kill you hard in the beer game. And by the way, Dayton and Athens, I mean, we have to maybe a, a, they're killing you in the beer game, too. And they're way smaller than you. Cincinnati, step it up. Step like, it up, Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, Nomad also asks. Keep, keep you your you Rheingeist. Have, I, some of you are like, oh, but what about Rheingeist? Keep it. UDF or Dairy Queen for ice cream? Is Dairy Queen technically ice cream? I, I guess. I, it's because I think it's like soft surf, which is not legally ice cream. I get yeah. I, I would go with D- UDF if if it's between those two. But there there's some really good. I'm I'm really into like custard ice cream. Okay. There, there's there's a couple of good ones here in the Raleigh area that so I like, really enjoy. Yeah, frozen custard, mm-hmm. which Very I guess good. technically again isn't like there's actually a real strict legal definition for what is and isn't ice cream. Well, which is I'm going off of my own de- definition. So. <laughs> It has to like contain X percent of milk fat and this and that. And it's, it's a very strict definition. Uh, I don't think Dairy Queen technically serves ice cream. That being said, give me a pumpkin pie blizzard and leave me the hell alone. That sounds good. Uh, Nomad also asks Jared drinking before basket bucks game encouraged after the last four losses. And four after during. Yes, yes. to the above. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, to the above. Uh, let's see. Buckeye Zach. Spacing is a key in facing the bigs. Okay. Yep. Yep. How can we achieve this within one week to successful to be successful through the Big Ten tournament and beyond in March? Hit your threes. That's it. You, you can't yeah. bang in the paint. You don't have that guy on the roster. You can't fix it. Mm-hmm. The only the only way you can do the only thing you can do is minimize it and you minimize it by and you're absolutely correct. Buckeye Zach. Ba- um, yeah, spacing is key and you create space by hitting those threes and you it's, counteract just, the fact that you can't necessarily stop those big guys in the paint by outscoring them by hitting those threes. Yeah, it's just if you want to kind of relate this to like football, kind of like Ohio State last year, they aired it out to open up the run game. It's yeah. kind of like here, you 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 make some threes to open it up in the paint. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the box in football is the same as the paint in basketball. If you if you if your offensive line isn't good enough to bang against their defensive line and their linebackers then you need to create space by taking the safeties and the linebackers and making them take a step backwards through the air. Yes. Kyle is a perfect analogy. All right. Buckeye Zach, another question. Um, who should do a discard pool, discord pool 
Also, the spring we game. should do a Discord pool for the spring game. Yes. <laughs> uh, which, side, which side you got, Scarlet or Gray? All right, we. I think we answered that. Jared's going Gray. I'm going with Scarlet. Let us know, let us know who you think is going to win, even though we don't know yeah. who's going to be on which side. Guys, Just let us know right now. Here's the joke. <laughs> Just look. This is the joke. We're gonna die for one of these teams. All right. We're going to fight. We're going to die. We're going to scrap. And it's just, it's absurdity for the sake of absurdity. That's the joke. Okay. So if you're team Scarlet, you can go to hell. This is a team gray household. All right. We go hard for team gray. That's the more I pretend like it matters, the funnier it'll be. Now, this is the only episode where we acknowledge the joke. From here on out, we don't acknowledge the fact that this is a joke. But for the rest of the spring, we team gray. We are team gray in here. Jared, whenever, whenever you talk about Ohio State colors, what is the first one you, they always say? Hail to the... Scarlet and gray. Scarlet in gray. Yeah, that's right. You send the lesser band out first. No, you you send you send you send, you send the you, lesser band out first. No, 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 no. They open no, the got, show we, and no, no, gray no, no, no. headlines. When 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 you see the players coming out out of the tunnel, uh-huh. who are the first ones out? Who are the first ones out? The starters. The starters. Mhm. Mhm. And that's team Scarlet. You know, you know, you know what happens, though, they're, they go at it at a light jog and the guys because they're they're conserving their energy because they actually have work to do. And the guys who are at best special teams players go running past them because what else are you going to do with your energy? Right. You're just going to be standing there for a few hours and they end up actually like crossing the line first. While the starters just sort of hang back. Because. That doesn't matter to them. They have bigger things to do. They're saving their energy for when it matters. All right. While the children run ahead. We milked this long enough here. Oh, no. We're milking this for the rest of this month and into halfway into April. All right. Any other questions you want to answer here, Jared, or anything that I missed here? Um. Uh, Buckeye Zach also asked us about baseball and I'll just say this. I have, I have no, I have no idea. Uh, he has, uh, an other sports question. How do you think Buckeye baseball here, here, will fare this here, here spring? We go. How do you think the Buckeye baseball will fare this season? Well, if they hit the ball, mm-hmm. I think they're going to do well. Well, if they need to hit the ball over the fence and <laughs> They should try to make sure that the other team doesn't hit the ball. Mm. But they should try to hit the ball uh, specifically over the fence. Or in between players. They call that a gap. In, 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 I, think, I think so. They call that the gap. Okay. Hit the ball sure. into the gaps. Is that the correct terminology? I don't know. Sure. Any, I don't know anything about baseball, you guys. I, don't, I, I, I know I know nothing about baseball. All right. All right. That's that's today's episode, Jared. <laughs> that <laughs> is today's we episode. Did we did it. So well, hopefully, hopefully we have some good news for Ohio State next for next uh episode here. We'll find out again. Ohio State plays on the eleventh, which is a Thursday. The winner of who did I say it was? Minnesota and Northwestern. Yes. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. I, I really am. Exp- I, it's complete failure if Ohio State doesn't win that game. It's a complete failure. That that's how you know Ohio State truly like just limped to the finish line. And then they have to if. You have to show something against Purdue. And again, I thought Ohio State, just to sort of cap the basketball talk, I thought Ohio State actually looked pretty good against Illinois. Again, that's the that is a top four team in the country. So. Despite the four game slide. 
And despite the fact that most of our attitude here was doom and gloom. I think this team can win at least two games in the Big Ten tournament. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say it's a failure if they don't, but it is a failure if they don't win one. But they they really I think the expectation needs to be that they win two. Yep. All right, uh, Kyle, that is the end of today's show. Um, want to thank everyone for listening in. I want to uh, invite everyone to check out the sloopcast.com, which is just a campsite page. If you know what campsite is, it's just a it's just a link page. It's just where you go to find all of our other links. So you can go to the sloopcast.com. There you can find our merch stores. I'm I'm wearing our uh, simple logo tee. This is the simple logo tee. If you want our logo, I keep forgetting what side I'm on. If you forget what logo, uh, I'm going to try that <laughs> sentence over again. If you, I'd edit it out, except I'm, I'm not going to. Uh, if you want uh, our logo, but bigger, we have the circle logo one. And that's like, that's like the whole chest. Um, Kyle can often be sore, seen wearing his uh, Columbus Crew parody sweatshirt. Is he, is it, was it, was it chair backing? There it is. That, that's a, that is a parody. Legally speaking, that is a parody t-shirt. It, it, it dawns the number 15, which is uh, the year we started this podcast. If you're curious why there's a 15 on it. And uh, we also have the 7071 merch store, which supports this podcast, but isn't necessarily like podcast merch. Because I know like maybe you're not overly excited to wear like merchandise from a podcast. And maybe you just want to support us by buying something that's generally like, oh, Ohio is cool. I want some stuff that celebrates Ohio. You can go to 7071.thesloopcast.com. Or like I said, you can just find that link at the at thesloopcast.com. Guys, I really want to encourage everyone to check out the Patreon page. We've been a bit stale bringing in new patrons lately. We are two thirds, two thirds of the way to reaching our Patreon goal. And our Patreon goal will have us doing this podcast twice a week during the off season twice a week during the off season and five times a week during the football season. So if you want the podcast every single weekday, this football season, jump on over to patreon.thesloopcast.com and, and just contribute the portion which you can contribute. And if that's not a thing you feel like you can do or it's, that you're going to do, even at something as low as $3 a month, which is our lowest tier, by the way, and get you access to pretty much everything. If that's not a thing you feel like you're going to do, that 66% goal includes our sponsorship money from Iron Bean and Mad Canadian. So by supporting them and making sure that they know that you came from the Sloopcast, by, by supporting them, you are by proxy supporting us and supporting that goal because... We lose either one of those sponsors. We we fall really even further off of that goal. So supporting them also supports us. But that being said, it we we really want to hit that goal. And we're like 66% of the way there. We're almost there. So $3 a month, $9 a month, whatever you're comfortable with, we would greatly appreciate it. All right, Kyle, um, that's all the that's all the shilling I feel like doing. Make sure to check out our Discord. I want to do the Discord one more. I want to plug that. Discord.thesloopcast.com. It's a private chat server. If you don't know what Discord is, just it's just a private chat server. That's all it is. It's just for Buckeye fans. Uh, also, probably Sloopcast fans, but also for, for Buckeye fans. Uh, it's mostly free channels. Like most of the channels are free. Um, there is a premium section, which you can access through the Patreon, which I already mentioned, uh, and you get that access for $3 a month. Uh, so it's, but it's mostly free. You, you'd be perfectly happy with the free section in all honesty. And if you really, really like it there, join, join the free section. Just, just don't even think about it. Just come join the free section. And if you really like it there and you want access to a little bit more, then you can do the $3, but first just, just come try it out for free at first. That's all. All right, Kyle, that's all the shilling I feel like doing. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? You got a few things here. Um, speak, let's start off with Ohio State football. 14 players were in, were invited to the NFL Combine that will not happen, which is yes. three more than any other school. There you go. Could have been even more. I mean, you know, 
Olave and Munford would have been invited. Yep. Uh, Mike Conley Jr. going to basketball, making his first NBA All-Stars game. That's that's crazy to me. Because mm-hmm. I think he was making like Mac Con- Max contract for a long time. Yes, agreed. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this last one is it's this is this is to you, Mad Canadian. This is to you, Mad Canadian. Tuesday night in Van Wert High School, 5:30 tip off. Your very own team in Scarlet and Gray. Your Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Uh oh. Taking on Cary in a division four regional semifinals Tuesday night at 5:30. So basketball. who are you? Are you Team Scarlet and Gray or are you Blue? Oh. Mm. Oh. Scarlet and Gray or Blue? That's that's I you just hitting him right in the heart on that one, man. That's that's mm. cold. That's cold right there. <laughs> I gotta go with that team in Scarlet and Gray. But aren't but 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 Bulldogs, that's so Georgia y. I have to I have to try. He's our sponsor, Kyle. He pays us a lot of money. I have to try, okay? okay. Ew, you're just so Georgia y though. You're Columbus Grove with your G is it, is it and Georgia it's a Bulldog. Isn't Georgia red and black though? Yeah, red and black. So it's still a red and a neutral. I mean, Ohio State does actually list white and black among their official colors. If you go look at the media guide which I have. If you go look at their media guide, it does list white and black among their colors. Ohio State has four official colors per the media guide. Scarlet, gray, black and white. So, I mean, it's it's real close. Are you saying there's no black on the Columbus Grove jerseys or logos or anything? Because I'm willing to bet there is. And also, carries the devils too so was my high school okay and does that not make up for the gray (laughs) six 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 (laughs) six 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 six. Uh, we've come full circle all right all right that's all i got here all right uh yeah that's it that that's the end of the show uh i got a i got a i got a thing from from nomad right and because if you listen to, to all the way to the end of last week's episode, he really I, I, I asked him to make a music recommendation and he, he, he really just dropped the ball. He dropped it hard. Like, oh, man, we, we stuck him in timeout and everything. It was embarrassing. No, no mad. It was embarrassing. So uh, he felt a little blindsided by the question, which, OK, I guess is probably fair. So uh, with with a little bit of time, he came back with a recommendation from an Ohio band that he wanted played on the podcast. And it is a it is a band we've played on the podcast once before. Uh, and the name of that band is Camp. Uh, they are from Athens, Ohio. Uh, that is they spell it. They spell it weirdly. Uh, I think it's with two A's. Is that correct? I think that's correct. I think it's with two A's. You can check the show notes. It'll be down in the show notes. Just, you know, because it's kind of like the band churches. Kyle, do you know the band churches where they spell it with a V instead of a U? You it's search engine optimization. If you're going to if you're going to name your band camp or churches, you're going to have to spell it wrong. Otherwise, no one's gonna be able to Google you. Mm, so, yeah. So, you know, Chiverches and Cam. You really have to lean into that a camp. Anyway, camp is ending today's show. Check the show notes to find out what song we're playing. And with all that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage you to Drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Camp. What's up, YouTube? Hope everyone's Team Scarlet. Team Gray. Scarlet. We are Team Gray. On this team Scarlet. In this house, we are Team Gray. Yeah, Jared. Yeah. What, what, yeah. What's the colors you have behind you? Like your your lighting effects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's red. Okay. Okay. It's not scarlet. It's red. Even the light bulbs aren't nearly are nearly that sophisticated. 
<laughs> They're just plain old red. Because like I'll be like, hey, Alexa. Office lights to scarlet. I don't know if that got through my sound filtering. It probably didn't. But she says, I don't know how to set it to that setting. She doesn't understand scarlet. Now, if I said red. So, for example, hey, Alexa, please set my office lights to white. Hey, Alexa, please set my office lights to scarlet. She doesn't know how to set it to that. Hey, Alexa, set my office lights to red. See, they're red because Alexa says so. You have once you, again failed. And this is Team Gray. This in, is in our in our in our discord, though, uh -huh. in our discord. Uh huh. You and I's colors mm -hmm. are scarlet. No, that is false. The mods color is scarlet. We're true red. Once again, Kyle, I am not even kidding. The mods have BB. You're, you're messing with the person who does all the art for this show. <laughs> I do all the art for this show. They are BB0000. They are Scarlet. We're true red. All right, let's end the episode. <laughs> hey, Kyle, what, what's the color of the shirt you're wearing right now? Well, it's not it's not six, 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 six. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, I don't know. It looks awfully heathered. So I bet there is some in there somewhere. Okay. Just right, saying. Whatever. Let's move on. All right. Let's end the show. Once again, I'd like to thank Camp for ending today's episode. And once again, I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. Let's see. I talked about uh, the Nordic coffees. I talked about the whole shebang sampler. Now, let's talk about some of the flavored coffees, Kyle. Uh, they have um, every coffee I've named so far has, has been unflavored, uh, just sort of a standard coffee. But they do have some flavored coffees. There's the intense blueberry. There's the mint chocolate chip. There's the mom's carrot cake. And there's the unicorn. Now, sometimes the unicorn is a mystery bag. Most of the time, I would say, actually, it's a mystery bag. But right now, and I'm on their website right this second. I could. I am looking at it right now. Right now, they actually are telling you what's in the bag. And right now, the unicorn is a salted caramel mocha. Now, that's right this second. I can't guarantee that it's still going to be that on Monday when this actually comes out. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it'll still be that way in a month. Maybe it'll be different by the time. This I know th that's the game you play with the unicorn. You just never know. That being said, the one time I got it, it was like, I want to say it was like blueberry and maybe something cinnamony, maybe like a blueberry muffin or something like that. It was real good. It was, it was like it was blueberry, but it had something in it that was reminiscent of like a baked good. I don't know if it was cinnamon or if it was nutmeg or what it was, but it was it was damn good. So the one time I've gotten the unicorn and I have a unicorn bag. You can't tell because of all of my blur and color and stuff, but there is a unicorn bag back there. He's right behind Urban Meyer. Um, yeah, but, uh, it was, it was, it was dang good. I've not had the salted caramel mocha yet, although I am tempted. I mostly drink the non-flavored coffees. That's just how I roll. And I've lately been drinking, uh, the, what was it? What is it? I was just, I think I was just talking about it last week. Is it the drink from the skull of your enemy? Is that what I'm drinking right now? I, I already have it ground up and I can't. Okay. You know what? We're moving on. I think it's the drink from the skull of your enemy. It is damn good. I really, really like it. Um, I always used to say I was more of a medium roast guy than a dark roast guy, but I've had enough of the dark roast from Iron Bean that I think I might be converting over. I'm not. I'm just saying, by the way, it is the drink from the skull of your enemy. It's damn good. It's smoky, creamy, chocolatey, cedary, tobacco-y, wine-y, and uh, spice. Those are the notes present in the drink from the skull of your enemy. It's, it's all coffee. It's not flavored in any way, but that's what it is. Anyway, you can find uh, that and a lot of other coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friend over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, Mad Canadian, as we mentioned numerous of times over, over the past year and a half year, just great seasonings. And now 
he's he's coming to a neighborhood near you if you're in the northwest Ohio area um, with his with his um, Mad Canadian food truck. Uh, be sure to check out his social media pages on Facebook and Twitter to find out where he and his food truck are heading to next. And he uses pretty much everything or all of his meats that he uses in his food truck comes from his seasonings that he produces over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Um, again, check the social media sites to find out where he and his food truck are heading. Um, Cause he doesn't tell us before we record. So I can't tell you as we're, as we're recording this. Uh, be sure, be sure to use that promo code Sleepcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order when purchasing all your great seasonings. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. 